Onward rejoicing, I tread my way. Higher I'm climbing each passing day. The hilltops of glory now rise in view. Over all should be made new. The hilltops of glory I now can see. Oh, brother, won't you come go with me? Safe on the mountain, I soon shall stand. Hilltops of glory land. Amen. Let us pray. Our kind Father, it's once more and again that we come before thy throne of grace. Father, we come as humble as we know how, thanking you, Father, for how you bless us, and Father, thanking you for another day's journey. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity we have to come and to study and to learn what thus says the Lord. We thank you so much, Father, for your man servant who's going to stand boldly before us and proclaim thy word without addition or subtraction. And Father, we ask that the word does not fall on deaf ears, that each of us take it and use it as a lamp unto our feet. We ask, Father, that everything that we do this evening be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. And Father, we ask these and all other blessings in your darling Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good evening. Thank you, Brother Young, for the opening song and the prayer. Uh, we are here once again on Thursday evening, 7 p.m., Bible study. Uh, we are considering a, another lesson from the series, Be Like Jesus. Be Like Jesus. Our edition this week is titled, A Heart Prepared to Worship. And our focal scripture is taken uh, from Matthew chapter one, verses one through five. And the Bible reads, six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and Jack and John, his brother, and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his face shone like the sun, and his garments became as white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three tabernacles here, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud said, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Once again, on this evening, our topic is a heart prepared to worship. One of the things that we notice in this text in Matthew chapter 17, verse one through five, is the intentionality the preparation and the plan 
to go to a high mountain and to connect with God. Verse one, it says six, day, six days later, Jesus took Peter, James, John, and he led them on a high mountain by themselves. So when you notice that scripture, it wasn't just by happenstance that Jesus took Peter, James, and John. He intended to take Peter, James, and John. And he intended to walk the distance to go to the location where he would worship. And so what we notice about this text is Jesus uh, is intentionally making time to get away and to worship God. He went with specific individuals. He went to a specific location and he went for a specific purpose. These actions all indicate the intentionality of the nature of what Jesus is signaling to us that when we encounter God, we've got to be intentional, we have to plan for it, and we have to be prepared for it. And this is similar to what Paul instructs those regarding their collection. Uh, I believe it is, let me go there. I don't wanna misquote the scripture, but I see the same train of thought in Paul's instructions to those regarding their collection in 1 Corinthians chapter 16. He says, now concerning collection for the saints, I've given you order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him, that there be no gathering when I come. So if there's not gonna be any gathering when he comes, that means that they've already planned for an amount based on how God had blessed them and prospered them. They made a plan, they put a plan in place and then they put that plan into action. And when Paul or whoever Paul sent to them to take the collection, the collection would be ready to be received. Giving is a part of worship. So if the same train of thought, intentionality, preparation, planning is involved with giving, it must be also a part of our intent to want to go to the place of where we come together as the body of Christ and worship God in spirit and in truth. Somebody ought to say amen on this evening. And so as we understand from this text, Jesus' actions are intentional and the signals Jesus was prepared for his encounter with God. There was a plan and the plan was not unintentional, but rather it was very intentional. He had a purpose and a reason to connect with God. As this period of time was a turning point for Jesus' ministry. You see, at this specific moment, there was about to be a shift. And at this point, Jesus is now headed to Jerusalem to be sacrificed. 
become a living sacrifice. And he's getting a way to prepare himself for the impending punishment that he will receive on behalf of the entire world's sins. And so we see this intentionality of wanting to get away and to go and to worship. When we see this, we understand that we too need to be intentional. How many of us don't make preparation to give before we get to church? We just haphazardly give a dollar, give two dollars, give 50 cents. That mindset is not the correct mindset, uh, especially when we look at the example of Jesus. He was intentional. And we look at the example that Paul leaves us uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Paul is telling us to be intentional and have a purpose and a plan for our giving, which giving is a part of the worship. But the overarching theme is worship. And so as the overarching theme is worship, uh, this worship has to be intentional. It can't just be willy-nilly. Oh, I'm going to come to church when I get to church. And when I get to church, I'm going to worship God. Well, I don't know if when you have that mindset, uh, your worship is going to be accepted <laughs> because you have to be prepared. And we know preparation and planning was all part of the example that Christ left us. And so we, we have to ask ourselves the same question, are we intentional? Are we uh, purposefully worshiping and preparing to worship God in a manner that he wants us to worship. Now, this became a reality for your preacher and hopefully for many of you while we were going through the pandemic. For me, I had to be intentional in order to put together a worship service that in many cases was done and recorded prior to the Sunday in which it was aired, it took preparation, it was intentional, and it was purposeful. For a whole year, we conducted online and not in-person worship service. And that whole act of planning and preparing for the worship to include videos, sermon topics, hymns, prayer, communion, and collection was very intentional. The editing that had to be done, the review that needed to be done, the planning that needed to be done to put things in order that we could all come together on Sunday morning virtually. It was all premeditated. Not one of these tasks that were done was not done with a thought of premeditation and purpose and intent. And as I look back at that whole ordeal, it, it kind of gives me a, a, a perspective in how we ought to be intentional. Intentional and having a plan of worshiping God and having an intent to get there and to get there with whoever we plan to bring with us to worship, whether it is our spouse, our children, our friends, our family members, it ought to be done with preparation and intent to want to be in the presence of Almighty God. 
to worship him. We too must enter our worship service being prepared to worship God. Our hearts must be stirred up before we even arrive to church on Sunday morning where the members of the church all assemble ourselves and we worship God. We gotta be stirred up. We, we have to already have prayed and meditated and read God's word. So when we enter into the building, when we connect with the body of Christ in the presence of almighty God, we are ready to worship him and to show God the reverence and the adoration that he is the almighty, sovereign, omniscient, omnipresent God. And that starts with a heart prepared to worship. So the question is, what is your mindset? Where is your heart? And are you prepared when you come and assemble yourselves amongst the brothers and sisters as we all assemble ourselves to worship God? And see, this worship has multiple purposes. Number one, it is our intent to give God adoration and reverence as part of worship, but it also serves to change us. Every time we are in God's presence, it causes us to change. And God invites us to come in his presence that he may see the change in us. I really believe this because the Bible is clear. When you look at 2 Corinthians and you look at chapter three and verse 17 through 18, you will find these words. Now the Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. That's true. Where God is, there's freedom. God gives us freedom from sin. Then verse 18 says, but we all with unveiled faces, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord, the Spirit. You see, when we are in worship and we are worshiping God, we are giving God adoration, we are giving him praise, we are magnifying his name, and in the same time, by being able to be in his presence, God is changing us to become more like him. Somebody ought to say amen on this evening or this afternoon to be able to be in the presence of the Lord and to be able to assemble uh, there and to worship him. You see, through our worship with the mighty God, you and I are transformed. And as we magnify the Lord and exalt him, and we are in his presence, worshiping him. So when we look at the act of worship and the definition of worship, we, we can see a good one in the Bible. Psalms 34 and three, it states, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Is not worship the assembly of the body of Christ, the church? That means we're together. And as we are together, we ought to magnify the Lord. We ought to exalt his name. We ought to lift his name on high and give 
him praises and lift our hands in the air and exalt his holy name. You see, we can't help but to have eager anticipation to want to be in the presence of God. And when you have that eager anticipation, it's like taking your first airplane ride. Can you remember the time you took your first airplane ride? You had anticipation. I know I did. I was about five years old. I may have been four, between four and five. And oh, I was excited. Mama, I'm going on the plane. I'm going on the plane. I'm going on the big jet today. Ooh, I hope I can see the pilot. I, I want to get in the cockpit and see the plane, how the plane flies. Ooh, I'm excited. I remember that day. And I got to go into the cockpit. And I got to meet the pilot. Matter of fact, I was on Eastern Airlines at the time, and the pilot gave me a set of wings. And I was so excited to be on that jet, going wherever we were going. There's a commonality between eagerness to want to be on the plane as it is to be eager to want to be in the house of God with the body of Christ to worship. When we are in those pews and we are excited and exuberant and willing to want to praise God, it's like being on the airplane for the first time. It's almost like you can't sit down. You're so excited that you, you, you almost want to stand up and, and, and you're fidgety and you, 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 you just can't sit down because you're so excited. You want to see the pilot. You want to see God like you want to see the pilot. That's the question. Part of worship is being in God's presence and having an eager anticipation to want to be in his presence. What we notice in this text by Matthew chapter 17, verse 1 through 5, Jesus' intention and his planning. Uh, to not only go to the mountain top uh, secluded by himself uh, along with those three that he took with him, but to be there, to go the distance of where they traveled from to where they were going to, to be there, to be in the presence of God. We've got to have the same mindset, church. It's important because it represents true worship. When we just half do stuff, God cannot be pleased. When we half do stuff in terms of our giving, when we half do stuff in terms of our worship, when we half do stuff, uh, even when it comes to preaching, when it comes to praying, when it comes to singing, all elements of worship, when it comes to your communion, if we are not truly focused and intentional in our worship, we just wasting our time. It's just a social club at that point. But our desire is to please God and not ourselves. And so we must be intentional in our effort to focus and to give God the praise and intentionally be there. This brings us back to our original point. We must be intentional in our planning and in our preparation to worship God. Even as Jesus was when he went to the mountaintop to pray and connect with God. Can't be by accident, church. Can't be by mistake, church, but it must be intentional and it takes preparation. What do you do the night before? Have you picked out the clothes that you're going to wear? Have you set aside 
your collection? If you're a song leader, have you prepared for the songs that you're going to sing that morning? If you're a preacher, have you done the necessary study to be prepared to deliver the message that God has set upon your heart to speak to the people, not what you want to say, but what the Lord wants you to say to his people. And if you are a member, uh, have you made the proper prep preparation to be there? Have you prayed? Have you read the word of God? And are you inspired to come and connect with the body of Christ as we all come and connect with Almighty God and exalt and magnify his name? When you have taken those steps to prepare, to plan, and be intentional in your worship, God will meet you there. And we will all be assembled together as one body to worship God in spirit and in truth. Our message this evening, once again, is be like Jesus, a heart prepared to worship God. You're here today and you may not have any understanding of what's required to worship God. I wanna share with you that you don't have to be on the outside and not understand what it means to worship God or to have a relationship with God because you too can have a relationship with God. Simply requires that you hear the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It requires that you believe the word of God. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Then you must repent of your sins. Tell you nay. Tell you nay. Likewise, if you repent, if you shall not repent, you should. Well, I messed that up. Point is, you need to repent of your sins. And then you must confess that Jesus Christ is the son of God. Upon your confession, we will then baptize you for the remission of your sins. You go down a sinner, but you'll come up a saint. Old things shall pass away. All things shall become new. The opportunity is yours to obey the gospel. For those of you who are members of the church and you have walked away from where God is, God doesn't want to leave you out there all alone. He's still calling you to repent. You can repent of your sins. We'll pray with you and ask God to forgive you of your sins. There may be some of you in the audience that just need prayer. The rent is too high. The gas is too high. The food is too high. Everything costs too much and you just struggle it to get by. We'll pray with you. And if we can, we'll help you as best we can. We'll ask God to bless you and to provide for you the things in which you stand in need of. So if you need prayer, you need to repent of your sins. And most of all, if you need salvation, the opportunity is yours this evening as we all sing the invitation song. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are
to pull it. Then his grace is out for you washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Certainly thank everyone for being here today. Uh, we want to remind you of a few things. Uh, number one, our food distribution, as you see on the screen, will take place on June 25th, 2022, 11 a.m at the Magnolia Park Church of Christ. We'll give away food and we'll also distribute hurricane supplies. And in the hurricane supplies, each participant will get a first aid kit, flashlights and battery, and water. Additionally, uh, we want to share with you what is taking place on Sunday, uh, there will be a South Florida rally for the 76th National Lectureship of the Church of Christ. The lectureship is taking place in September, the 24th through the 29th, but the rally this Sunday for the lectureship will take place at the 15th Street Church of Christ 390 Northwest 15th Street, Pompano Beach, Florida, at 2.30 p.m. Like for us to assemble those that want to go there, and we all get on the bus, those who want to travel on the bus uh, or van, and attempt to support this effort. And so those are the two announcements uh, that I want to share with you for this week and uh, want to just remind you to continue to pray for one another. So with that, anybody else have any announcements that they'd like to share before we ask uh, Brother Murphy to give us the closing prayer? I see your hand, Brother Murphy. Unmute yourself. You have to unmute yourself. You're muted. Okay. Uh, Brother Young, if you would give us our closing prayer. Father, we thank you so much for today. And Father, we thank you so much for the lesson. We thank you so much, Father, for your man servant. And Father, we thank you so much for each and every person under the sound of my voice. We thank you so much, Father, for life, health, and strength. And Father, we ask that as we leave and as we go to our own places of abode, that you keep your loving arms around us and let no hurt, harm, or danger come to us, that we may be able to assemble back at the next appointed time and co to continue to work in your vineyard. We ask your Father to continue to bless those that are bereaved. We ask you to bless those who are in the hospital and who are sick. We ask you to continue to be with them and study the hands that will administer to them. And Father, we ask you to continue to bless each of us as you see we stand in the need of a blessing. And Father, we ask all of these things in your darling Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.